Hi, this is Kyle with Global Social Media Marketing. And in this video, you're going to learn how to use Typeform and interactive quiz software to generate lead submissions and contact submissions for your company. Typeform has nicer and cleaner quizzes that have higher conversion rates compared to typical form and quiz submissions. So stick around at the end of this video to learn how to set up Typeforms and get them on your funnels. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Typeform is a well-designed quiz, survey, and form software that essentially allows you to create lead generation forms that qualify your leads with zero code. Here's the Typeform website. It's typeform.com. And let's go through the different plans that they have. First off, we have the basic plan, which is $29 US a month. And it allows you to make as many Typeform quizzes uh, as you want with as many questions as you want. And these quizzes allow you to have logic inside them. So for instance, a yes, no question. If someone answers yes, they could get directed to a question that is specific to what they answered yes to. And then for no, if they choose to answer no, they would be directed to a different question. So that is kind of um, what logic is in Typeform. You can get email notifications, you can have payments embedded in your type forms, so you can accept payments from users that go through your forms in quizzes, and you can integrate with many other softwares using Zapier. So a lot of great stuff is involved in just the basic plan. The plus plan has all of these check marks from the basic plan, in addition to removing the type form branding. So now, instead of having powered by Typeform on all of your Typeform quizzes, that won't be there anymore. So it's a bit more professional. And then there's also the ability to redirect, which is super important, especially in lead generation, when you want a form to be natively on your funnel and you want it to redirect to a thank you page or maybe a client website or your own website after someone submits the form. When you have that redirect happen and you can have a conversion tag or your tracking tags on that conversion page, that's super important for the tracking side of your funnel and being able to see the numbers as to which leads are converting from where and, and how all of that is measuring out. So the redirect on completion is a really important kind of feature, which I would definitely advise that anyone that gets Typeform to be able to have qualifying quizzes, have surveys, have forms that are really detailed and really personable, I would definitely advise to look into the redirect features, especially for, again, getting that tracking for your own funnels or your clients' funnels. The last plan, the business plan, is 99 US dollars a month, and this is all billed monthly. So on a month by month basis, $99. And it has everything from the plus plan plus drop-off rates on a per question basis. So you'll be able to see which questions people are, users are dropping off from, uh, and then which questions users aren't dropping off from. So you know that if there's a question in your Typeform quiz that has a massive drop-off rate, then you kind of can see that as an indicator that something is off with that question, or maybe that question needs to be rearranged in the quiz flow, or maybe it needs to be taken out. The business plan also allows you to integrate Typeform with Google Analytics, again, for tracking and Google Tag Manager, along with some of the other features that you can see here where pretty much you can schedule a time for your, your type form to stop accepting new submissions. And then you also get kind of the benefits of the entire type form brand support. So you'll be able to get priority when you want to contact type form support and reach out to them about any issues that you may have. So these are the major paid subscriptions that you can choose from for Typeform. However, you can also try out Typeform for free. So I would definitely urge anyone to check out what they have to offer. And if you'd like to kind of dip your toe in before you commit, then click the link below and sign up for Typeform for free. And that way you can kind of play around with it and see if it could be a possible solution for you. In Typeform, you would come to the Create Typeform button, and then I would just start from scratch. That's usually what I do. And it'll open up like the Typeform Builder. We're gonna call this My Typeform Test. 
So this is like the default builder here. You'll have your questions on this left-hand side, and then you'll have like formatting and like criteria on a question by question basis on this side. For this first question, since this is a test type form, let's say that we were remaking this quiz, but in type form. So first off, we would say this is a personal injury law client form, right? So for the first question, the first question is asking, what's your first name? So we would change this, the type of the question to what we're looking for. So they have a lot of options here. You have email, date, you can even do payments, uh, rating scores, short text, long text, phone number. We're going to go with short text. We're going to say, hey there, uh, what's your first name? And then we can do, um, we can add an image. So, you know, for an image, you can upload stuff or you can just search through their stock. So we could say, we could do something like that. Do something like that, kind of change how it's formatted, and then we'll make this question required. So they have to pretty much fill out this question if they're going to submit the, the type form. And now we're going to add another question. So now we're going to add the, the last name. So we'll do another short text and your last name. Make it required. Okay. So that's there. Now we're going to do. So now we can do email. What's your email? And then we can say something down here like, this is where we'll send our personal injury law case study. We want to have some sort of justification for things like email and phone number because people don't want to get spammed, which is understandable. So you kind of have a caveat in there. And then here we can even do icons. So we can do email. Say I like this one. I want to change the color to be orange can add it and then put that right there. Add another question here. We're going to do phone number now. What number can you be reached at? We'll associate this with uh, your information. Something like that. That required. I'll come for this. We'll do phone. That. Add that in, format it a little bit. Okay, that looks good. And then last we have company website. So we're going to make this one a short text here. Actually, we'll make it a website one here. Um, and we'll do, what's the URL of your website. And then we can do an icon here this turn it up there put that there so now we got that set up and that's required so that's good now this is just um, like a straight kind of path where someone will come in here and then it'll progress just like this and then at the end what we can do is we can redirect so if we wanted to we could um, take the once this was on a domain, so like right now it's not, but if it when it was, then we would take the thank you page of the funnel, and then we would add a add a redirect to URL. We would put that in there, and then we could we could publish this. So if we wanted to check this out. This is the form right here. We could do like John Doe. And then that just went there. That's like the basics of going through a, um, a type form quiz. What we can also do with type form is we can also have logic in some of the quizzes. So Say we have a question that's like multiple choice, or it's something that we can do like branching paths based off of. So ask a question earlier on, and we could say like, would you like to tell us your name? We'll make it required, and we're just going to have that like that. And what we can do is we can go to logic. And so here you can see the actual path here. 
And so um, say we want to have a question where if someone didn't want to tell us their name, then, then they wouldn't have to, and they wouldn't even see these name questions. What we can do is we can have logic that's pretty much saying, okay, if would you like to tell us your name is no, then go to there is what we can do. So now, okay, let's save. We can also look at the logic. Let's see what the logic is for, in all the other cases, jump to, hey, there was your first name. Okay, so now we're going to go through the preview. The preview is just like to kind of see it. So tell us your name. We're going to click no. And then it just goes to email. If we go back, we click yes. It goes to, hey, what's your first name? So that's something where um, sometimes, like, because we want to get good results for our, our clients, we end up needing to make sure that the people that come through the funnel are the right type of people. So, for instance, what we can do is we can disqualify people if they don't meet certain qualifications. So if, say, this was for personal injury law, and we asked a question like, is your personal injury dated within the past month? And if they answer no, then because there's a statute of limitations, we could we could send them to a an ending of the funnel where it's pretty much saying, sorry, it doesn't look like we'll be able to help with your particular situation. Here are some resources that you can pursue further to help get further results or to help you with finding a better solution or something like that. And so that way, the client doesn't receive a lead that's not good, essentially, that's not going to drive their business. And the lead doesn't get false expectations that our client is going to be able to help them when sometimes that's not the case, right? So that's kind of the nice thing about the logic. Marketing.com. And it redirects. So that's um, the nuts and bolts of Typeform. And if we go to the results tab, we should see two results now because I've gone through the form twice. You can see that there are two responses here. And it, the responses are timestamped and they have all the answers. So like in the first one, I put my name, John Doe. And in the second one, I, I said, no, I didn't want to tell my name. So I, there's no response there. So that's Typeform and the basics of like getting it created. What you can also do if you want to make it more appealing, say your client has branding documents, they want specific fonts, they want specific colors, they want specific messaging, you can edit that stuff in the design tab. So, you know, if I go to create a new theme and I say, I want the font to be Arial and I want the questions to be orange and I want the buttons to be yellow. And I want the answers to be orange. Then I can set all that stuff. Then I can also add logos too. So you can kind of go through here and adjust things based on how you want it to look or to match the landing page. I do that a lot where I have the same, make sure I have the same font across the landing page and the quiz so everything is like cohesive. And then you can turn off the Typeform branding. You can choose whether you want um, some of these things and um, you can even include tracking on it. Pretty much UTM tracking can be tracking for, that can be passed along to log like which keywords, which ads are driving which, uh, which results and, and um, stuff like that. Okay, when you're happy with your Typeform and it's set up the way you want, now it's time to get it on your funnel. So in another tab here, I have high level, which is our CRM that we create sales funnels and funnel pages through. I have that funnel builder pulled up here. And to get this type form, which exists in a standalone fashion right now, on the funnel page, you're going to come to the top header here. You're going to go to share. And we're going to be embedding this in the funnel page so that it is a seamless part of the page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click standard under embed in web page. It will have a little preview here of kind of what the type form will look like. 
And in the design section, you can adjust how wide it is and the height in pixels and these other parameters here. This you can also do in the code itself. So I prefer just to click get the code. Then I copy the code to my clipboard and now I'll go over to my funnel builder. I'm going to add in an element and this may change depending on which funnel builder uh, or landing page software you're using. But I'm going to click this custom JavaScript HTML code block here. I'm going to open the code editor. And now I'm going to paste in that code that I just copied. And so here you can also see that you have that width percent percentage and the height in pixels here. So you can adjust that too. Click yes, save. Then I'm going to save this page. And now we can preview the page. And once it loads, you'll be able to see that the type form comes up. Now you can see that it's kind of um, kind of small here. We have this uh, scroll bar. To get rid of that, you just want to extend the height on your type form. So what I'll do is I'll come back to the code block, open code editor, and instead of 400, maybe we set this to 700 pixels, save, and I'll preview it again. And you can see here that there's no scroll bar and the quiz is right there. So now the type form is on your funnel pages. That is the summary of type form and how it can be used for contact forms, lead generation forms, multi-step forms, stuff like that. If I go to, let's see, this is a past um, clients type form here. If I go to, to the results here, we can see a data on each question. So like, in high level, you can look at the forms, but because all of these are here and you can only submit the form by filling out all of them, you don't know if like one question is turning people off more than another one. But with type form, you do, because when we do multi-step forms, and that's what, that's what this is, when there's one question per slide, pretty much, that's multi-step. Whereas this one is just single step. You know, you have, you have to fill out everything before you can move on and progress. With this one, I could say, I could finish the first question, but maybe for some reason I don't like this question, then I, you know, I close out of the page, right? So that's what these drop-off rates are. So this is a quiz that we did for a tax client that we had earlier this year. And here you can see the different drop-off rates. So sometimes when we're doing this, we, we go through the same process of testing as we do for ads and keywords. So pretty much, We'll see which steps and which questions are have high drop-off rates. So like the what's your name, that's expected to be higher than like a simple yes or no question. And so when we're looking at the results, we may end up tweaking the quiz questions to try to decrease the drop-off rate and increase the number of completions. Because each completion is another lead for us in that like, goes towards the results of our clients. So how you create a type form quiz is pretty simple. And that's how you create a qualifying quiz for savvy lead generation using type form. Type form looks better and converts better than traditional quiz softwares. So click the link below this video to buy type form or to sign up for free. We highly recommend them. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please subscribe to our channel, Global Social Media Marketing. Click the notification bell so that you get notified whenever we upload new videos to our channel. Like this video and comment if you had any questions at all. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.